Hey everyone, my name is Rick Lowenstein. I am the Chief Strategy and Growth Officer for Centria Healthcare and Centria Autism. We are the leading provider of ABA therapy, uh, serving kids in 10 states, uh, over, th over 3,000 children in 10 states, with a team of 3,500 amazing people that do this great work every day. And we're here today celebrating World Autism Awareness Day in our world. Autism Awareness is a daily event. So we're really happy to be here on our Facebook Live page and uh, have a couple of special guests with me. So first, what I'd like to introduce is a colleague of mine. He is our brand ambassador and an amazing guy, Will DeYonker. Will, welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, great, great to see you again, Will. <laughs> Will, tell us uh, just a little bit about what you do at Centria as a brand ambassador. Well, my role at, as brand ambassador for Centria is I get to go to different public schools that may or may not have ABA therapy or programs at schools and tell them and explain to them about the importance of ABA therapy and the benefits that autism visuals would have um, for all the great unique talents. But we gotta beat every step away to help them show their unique talents so that way they can actually flourish and thrive in their own terms. Great. And so for those of you that don't know, ABA therapy is Applied Behavior Analysis Therapy. It's the only evidence-based therapy that's approved by the American Academy of Pediatrics, mm -hmm. the CDC, and the Surgeon General. And in the state of Michigan, and in many states around the country, any insurance company that's doing mm -hmm. uh, business in a particular state, the ABA therapy is a covered benefit, uh, and also a covered benefit if folks have Medicaid. So there's really zero barrier to access and entry for children with autism. So thanks, Will. So Will, okay. we have a special guest here today mm -hmm. that's special to you. Tell us who's here with us. Right next to me is my good friend, longtime friend, and mother, <laughs> Dr. Susan Blasque Carver. <laughs> it's a rare child we call you a friend, I right? I tell you, for <laughs> sure, <laughs> for sure. Uh, welcome, welcome, Susan. Thank so you. It's just, uh, you know, it's been phenomenal working with Will. Uh, he's just an amazing guy on so many levels, and so you should be so proud of, of what he's done, and in many ways, what you've done. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for, for inviting me here today to celebrate the successes of autism. You know, people have no idea what's ahead of them at the end of this long road. So that might be a good start uh, going to the beginning of the road because it is a long road, but can you share um, your experience when um, Will first had his diagnosis and just, you know, walk us through that. Well, when, when William was young, he was my firstborn, and at that time, autism was what, maybe one in 500s, and there was really no information out about it. Um, when I, my child, when he was two years old, I, I noticed that he was having trouble understanding the word no, I'd pull him away. He would bolt and do things that were frightful to me and dangerous to him. We'd be out somewhere and he'd just run away and run out a door and run across the street. Um, he would occasionally go to the kitchen door and bang his head on the door and I'm like, baby, no, what are you doing? And um, I knew something was up but really had no idea whatsoever. And when he started preschool in Jackson County in Michigan, um, one of the preschool teachers said, you know, Susan, he really should be tested at the Jackson County ISD. No idea what that is. And mm -hmm. like, she's like, I think something's up. And uh, then it kind of affirmed what I thought, that I'm not just a bad parent who can't teach my child something. Mm -hmm. We had him tested, and then I ca they uh, gave me the uh, uh, diagnosis of, actually it was pervasive developmental disorder at that mm -hmm. time, which was a precursor to autism. And at that time, I can't say I f was upset about it. I was like, oh, relief. I have a, I have an action plan. I can develop an action plan now because I have, I, have, I have a word, a word that I can research. And then once I researched that word, then kind of the heartbreak came of that this was something permanent, but something that we could work toward a happy ending. It's fantastic. So uh, obviously you're not alone. We talked earlier um, off camera that, that ABA therapy, autism support is a complete team effort. Yes. So describe that for folks that are listening that just may have questions or may not know what to do. Tell me, tell me about that. Well, as a mother, um, at that juncture, there, we didn't have these glorious services that come to our door. 
like they do now. I mean, people are so blessed to have this and have the legislature have passed this for, for children. Um, at my, when William was diagnosed, I had to, as a mother, research and talk to family members and find out who knew what to, to, to find a course of action. And I, it turned out that one of my family members, a friend of a family member actually, was a, a therapist at, um, uh, uh, it was uh, Judith Vine School, School for, for Autistic Autism. Children, mm -hmm. and she encouraged me to take the diagnosis, fill out the forms, and and to go down there and take a three-week intensive course on ABA therapy. Right, so I had therapists teach me as a parent all the techniques I needed to know in order to teach my child who was living with me. Right, we're the parents. So, so with that being said, I came home and then in, took him to a school that because it was just coming out where they yeah. were allowing kids to have one-on-one -on -one therapists in the, not therapists, but mm -hmm. uh, student aides. And they were mothers that had you know a few hour courses. And what I did was took that information to the school, to all of his, his team at school, and then you know his, his child care, family, friends, and I taught them the techniques that I learned, which is applied behavioral analysis at that time they called it. Um, basically it's positive parenting right. or, or positive psychology and all the techniques that were positive reinforced in order to educate my child and uh, we created a village, a village. And now we have this village that comes to our homes <laughs> via Centria Services, right? right? I'm so excited. Yeah, it's amazing. So um, part of Centria's mission is to uh, help every child living with autism uh, develop, pursue and achieve their own goals and dreams through positive ABA therapy and support. And so, Will, I'm gonna throw this to mm -hmm. you to say, um, in many ways you're like living a dream <laughs> and living the dream. Um, tell us, you know, in your own words, you know, what that means to you. Well, I never really would have thought that all these years growing up and getting to be where I am today, I never thought that this would be possible. Because I remember looking back at 14, 15 years old at a time, and I was feeling like the kind of kid that was one of the most loneliest people on the planet and at such a young age in high school. And around that time, I just felt like, you know, I just didn't know I've had any confidence with myself or confidence of anything because I only like to do things, but I like those interests that are not propelling me forward to what might lead to like a interest for other people for social clubs or activities, sports activities, or a career. And so during that time, around the time I asked my mom about what's, what was wrong with me, I felt so alone. And, and but down the time that she told me that I had autism, and that really just put like a put like like a big shocker to me. And it took some time getting used to it. But then after that, then I started actually self improve myself more with some help from my folks. Yeah. And from that point on, I was starting to gain more interest in like other people's activities, other interests, communications. I was practicing so much I just because I know that at that point it was time for me to you know to just push on forward because now I know I have it's time to move, move forward and so I did and so to other things and to for the ups and downs of life and learn how to deal with it and then by the time like by the time I got to ES Nutrition on Magic that time I felt like I was living a dream and it can't be real yeah cause, <laughs> but yet I got there and that was the really accomplishing part I just think that somewhere, someone, including my parents in this world and upstairs, has been guiding me every step of the way to be where I'm supposed to be and help out other individuals that are not so fortunate. Because there are autism individuals that are fortunate, but there are some that are actually not so fortunate. And that's why we got to help out those that need more hope and guidance. Well, you've, you've been just, uh, just an amazing inspiration to not just mm -hmm. your colleagues, mm -hmm. but to mm -hmm. the communities in which you've gone to actually speak and talk about autism, talk about ABA therapy. It's, um, you're an amazing guy, and uh, I'm happy to call you my friend, too. So anything, uh, last words you'd like to add that, uh, you know, maybe for parents or um, the community? You know, don't give up. It's a it's a very long road. It's a challenging road. There are heartbreaks. There are disappointments. But it's all about study to the wheel, consistency, mm -hmm. consistency, consistency, consistency. Yeah. Because it's throughout their entire life, the brain never stops rewiring itself. If it cannot find mm -hmm. a path or, or follow the path. Um, through the park, um, as people with, uh, what I always say, as normal brains, um, there's always a shortcut. 
that you can find through positive ABA therapy, where if you continue to walk that grass short path over and over again, you'll create a new path of learning. But it is continual and it's ever life lasting. The, these ch individuals will continue learning and continue blossoming and continue growing their entire life. So there is never hopelessness. It is just being consistent and having that village, that team put together, and that is what the key to success is. And that's why you're looking at this beautiful, beautiful man, because he is not only a wonderful, wonderful representative of what ABA therapy can do, but he is a actual a beautiful man, and I am proud to call him my son. And I'm proud to call her my mother. <laughs> uh, all, that's all great. I'm going to embarrass so. you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I embarrass you. Yeah, not at all. That's great. So uh, I just uh, want to say thank you both, Susan and Will, for, for doing this uh, and for sharing information on Global World Autism Awareness Day. As I said earlier, uh, at Centria, Autism Awareness Day is a daily thing for us and for the people that we serve, which are so meaningful to us. If you'd like more information about Centria Autism, please go to our website, centriaautism.com. And if you would, download this puzzle piece. It's on there now. And uh, download it and uh, fill in, I support autism because. And I think I would put, based on what Susan said, I would put the word team because it is completely takes a team and takes a village. So thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day and celebrate autism. Thank you. Yay. Yeah, I said that's a little bit unfair. No, you're entitled.